Anyway, I suppose you're curious about installing software. Well, I typically use slackbuilds.org, which is, I guess, an external site, although it's very much um, recommended by Slackware's own site. Uh, it's probably the largest repository. Um, you've got all the versions that here you can choose from. Now, slackbuilds.org is not actually binary packages. It's actually... <coughs> Excuse me. It's actually uh, basically packages that are source that they build from source, but they're build scripts. So if you've ever used Arch Linux and you you're familiar with the AUR, the Arch User Repository, you should be pretty familiar with the concept here. Basically, so you you got let's say KDN Live for instance. Uh, you click on it, and uh, what you get here is a link to the source code, which you would download and uh, you don't actually have to extract it, the build script will do that for you. All you've got to do is download the build script here and extract the build script, copy in the the source archive into the, the, the slack build uh, directory and then you'll just run the build script and it'll unpack it. It'll do it for you basically and generate a package which then you install with install package which is um, let me just go into root here because there we go. Install package. Excuse my prophetic typing. Anyway, install package. So as you can see, uh, that's what you would use. And it's package, or you can use package tool, which is uh, the standard one as well. This one is more menu based, so you can go install package in the current directory if you open it within that directory. Or you can click, oh, sorry, or navigate to and uh, press enter on another directory and then type in your directory so temple or whatever wherever your package has been generated and it'll do it for you gives you a nice uh, description etc so that's really good uh, this just lists your uh, individual files the readme and the slack build so you can review these files before you download them in the archive so you know what you're getting now this is the most important part here I would say it also tells you the dependencies, so what's required and what optional, what's optional, what's required. So these are your de dependencies here. So you've got to make sure that all of these are installed, or if they're not, then you install them. And you install them, and then you can, then you can install the actual or build KDN Live, for instance, so long as all dependencies are met. So again, this is all manual. So what you would typically do is, you'd probably open up another tab on Slack Build org and then you go searching for these and build these first and uh, again building them is not hard it's it's largely as simple as extracting the slack build moving the source package into the slack build directory and then just simply doing a uh, where are we you know dot you know whatever it's called slack build then it'll start doing generate the package then you just install package with this with install package command or the, the package tool basically pretty simple different and you do have to manage your own so it's not for everyone and you know you, you wouldn't expect it to be but it's different and it gives you a lot of control and I think the idea is that typically there would be less dependencies because you're managing yourself and you're only sort of including what you absolutely need so there is if you do it right, you're probably getting a system with less bloat and things like that. That's one of the pros, anyway. You can probably see the cons, but it, it's more of a con depending on you know how you manage a system or what you prefer. If you'd rather just the convenience and simplicity of an automatic you know package manager, then obviously you would go with that. But this is different, and I thought it was well worth trying. However, there is a very handy tool made by the Slack builds. Slack builds guys that actually makes this a lot easier and faster. It's called SBO package. You can get it off their own site and pretty easy to install. They give it to you as just a, a typical package which you install with the install package, which you can then and then you get this. So you can automatically sync with the remote repository, which is of course the slackbuilds.org. View the change logs. You can view. Uh, and remove the packages you have in the system. So if you can see here, these are the packages that I have installed from Slack Build. A decent little amount, just the ones I need. And uh, ones I'm pretty happy with. I've got G15 Daemon, the task, the extra XFCE tools, XArchiver, the Ubuntu font, etc. So it's all available from there. But what's so cool about this is that you can search a package. Again, so let's say KDN Live. You'll see it. Now here's the kicker. 
you can add it to a queue. You can queue up packages. So if you got a whole line of, of tools that you need or tools packages that you need for a certain application, the easiest and fastest way is to use their own tool and instead queue up the package that you need. So I need say MLT, search for it, add to queue, back search for another one, record my desktop, add to queue, etc, etc. And you keep going like that until you've got the dependencies queued up. And then you would go manage the queue. And then you can just process the current build queue. And it'll, it'll, it'll download them in the exact order that you queued them up. It would build them. And basically, you'd have this entire automated build queue, which would, in the end, it would spit out a completed, built, and if you want it to, installed KDN Live. So it just makes it a lot faster. So you're still managing your own dependencies, but it's a lot faster because you know you build the queue, it'll build it for you. It just takes out some of the really, really hands-on management. It's all about choice in Slackware, like a lot of things to do with Linux. So that's how you do that. Uh, again, now it is worth mentioning that with Slackware, it's not just all manual management. There are, or there is, at least a couple of tools that I know of that you can use that actually do manage your dependencies. One is called slapped get which is much like of course apt get in Debian and in fact it tries to emulate Debian but in Slackware so it actually will automatically manage some dependencies to a point. Uh, you know it's a, it's a distribution with a smaller package base and of course it's primarily not doesn't have automatic tra uh, tracking so it's set up by a small group of users so it can only work to so much, but slap get, I believe, is especially used in Salix, which is a, a, a derivative of Slackware. And so, as far as I'm aware, I haven't tried Slackware myself, but slap get supposedly does work, and there are many people using derivatives of Slackware with package managers that automatically resolve and apparently work fine. So, if you want the stability of Slackware but don't want to have to manage with the um, the dependencies, it's a, it's a good route to go. So you, you can do that. I personally didn't want to bother because I wanted to experience uh, Slackware as it is. I wanted to, in, uh, yeah, basically experience Slackware the way it should be. And uh, even if I am using something like a Slack build repository uh, package managing tool, um, it's just a, uh, just a little convenience thing, but I still like having a bit of hands on. Um, so far it's not bad, I mean I've only had it for a couple of days, so you know, this is really just a sort of a quick, as quick as I can manage, look into Slackware. Um, I'm not sure what else I can really, really show anyone. As you see it's kernel 2.6.37.6. I'm running the 64-bit version on a Pentium Dual Core E5200, just my standard system that I run Arch on and Windows when I need to, etc, etc. Probably just use HTOP. Uh, we're using, uh, obviously because I'm screen recording, we're using some uh, some CPU, but otherwise the CPU for me usually sits around a few percent, if if anything, really idling. And uh, RAM, of course, we're using a few hundred, but I have got some, you know, the Firefox open and whatnot. It's pretty efficient. What version is it? It's 4.6. So it's not the latest X F yeah, sorry, XFCE, but it does the job. So far I'm liking it. Um, yeah. What can I say about it? Well, obviously you couldn't really recommend it to a, a newbie user or or if you just prefer more of a point and click environment, because of course when you first install Slackware you don't actually get well, you do get point and click and a point and click environment once you've got once you start up the X server, but when you first boot it up after installing, you come straight to a command line, and you log in as root. You have to set up your user in the command line, and a couple of other things, and then finally start up X with start X, which will take you to the window manager, which you choose during your installation. It gives you a choice. Uh, I chose XFCE, of course, so it was automatically configured to start XFCE once I typed in start X in the command line. Um, you can, of course, configure it again with some extra text file configuring you can configure it to start directly into your X server when you start the machine to automatically boot into your X. I don't because, I don't know, 
with Slack where I just like coming to the command prompt and seeing all my messages and I'm a bit of a control freak and I like seeing these things and I don't know, I'm just a bit weird like that. But anyway, so I'm happy to start X myself and manage it that way. I can still shut down the machine right from um, XFCE, so no issues there. Uh, so again, you wouldn't really recommend it to a newbie user, but if you're pretty experienced or really want to learn a bit more about Linux or a bit, get a bit more hands-on or try something different, certainly give it a go. I think everyone should really, should really try XF, not XFC, but Slackware. Sorry, Slackware at least once. It's a bit like Gentoo. It's one of those things you should probably at least try once because it's 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 different, but it's worth it, and it's really it's different. And it might seem slower, but once you get going with it, you don't notice it so much, and you probably do appreciate the little things, the little things you uh, you learn. And it's one of those distributions that um, really does stay true to its roots. You know, it doesn't want to go along with the the glitzy and glamour and trying to compete with Windows or Mac or that sort of thing you see perhaps these days. You know, uh, with Slackware, you know, you're not likely to to see those things or have them thrust upon you. Slackware is what Slackware is and it'll remain very much true to what it is. So I guess you could almost say it's old school but yet it's still it's still very well quite popular I think and it still keeps up with the time. So it's still well worth checking out, giving a go and having a try. And you know you might get a bit annoyed by the uh, package management, but again there are actually tools that can manage it for you if you want to and you still want to try out Slackware, so it's not all bad. So anyway, uh, I'll play around with it some more and uh, we'll see how it goes. So anyway, it's probably I'm rambling on a bit really and I probably haven't really delved in to the whole uh, Slackware thing, but this is just a bit of a quick look and my impressions of it basically, so anyway. Thanks for watching. Uh, thumbs up, rate, subscribe, all that stuff, all that jazz. You don't have to, but sure, if you like. And thanks for watching. See you later.